Hi, I'm Chris Bailey. I'm a Blender YouTuber over at C Bailey Film, and today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie, and I'm going to be unpacking for you how you can use Vertex Paint to create some really cool grunge on simple models. Let's get started. Now, this is a great reminder to go check out Jonathan Lampel's new course on cgcookie.com, The Fundamentals of Texturing. This course has got everything in it, from how to create procedural materials to how to UV unwrap and texture paint and create materials from scratch using all kinds of methods and approaches. He covers everything. So if you want to learn all there is to know about creating textures and materials in Blender, this is the course for you. Go start your free trial now and check it out. So here we are inside a little project. Now I'm going to use this model as an example model to demonstrate vertex painting and how powerful it is and what you can use it for. Uh, this is a cool little droid that I made over on my channel at C Bailey Film. I've got a whole series of animation tutorials that I put together using this guy. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this basic uh, material that I've got, this procedural material, we're going to add some grime to it without having to unwrap any of UVs and without having to do any texture painting. And we're going to use vertex paint to do it. Okay, so how do you do it and what does it look like? So let me show you. First off, select this model and we're going to go from object mode into vertex paint mode, okay? Now, one thing that's important to note is right now I'm using EV to render the viewport, okay? And in EV, you're not gonna be able to see vertex colors. So you need to switch out of EV into your flat shaded mode. What you need to do is when you're in vertex mode, you just select if you wanna be painting the faces or the vertexes themselves, and you can pick between the two. We also have some controls up here. We're gonna set the color. Right now, everything's painted white, so it's all the same color. And uh, we can, I'll show you some of these other tools in a second. So I'll just select vertex mode and it'll show me all the vertexes. Now when they're black, it means they're not selected and I can't paint on them. But if I select all, right, and then come over here and switch my color from white to black, I can paint on the surface of my object. Now you can see that what ha what's happening is I'm not actually painting on the surface, but I'm actually just coloring vertexes. Uh, this is actually just giving a numeric value of zero to one to a vertex. Now you can actually go in here and add colors. So it doesn't have to be uh, just straight up black and white. So you can add colors as well and you can use them in different ways. And I'll show you what we can do to get a hold of this. But uh, we're just gonna stick with black and white for now. Now, if you've got um, a bunch of color, or you've done some work and you kind of want to start over, if you select all your vertices, again, by hitting A, you can go to paint set vertex colors and we'll set it to whatever it is you have up here. So I'm gonna select white and I'm gonna go paint set vertex colors. Oops, sorry. Paint set vertex colors and we're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go back to setting mine to black. I'm just gonna use black and white. And what I wanna do is I wanna think about where I wanna put some grime and some dirt on this uh, model. So I'm gonna focus on the sort of the corner points or where there's intersections. So I'm gonna paint just around here. Now I can change the uh, strength as well. I can bring the strength right down. And, and now it's gonna allow me to not paint fully uh, black, but I can kind of you know have darker areas and lighter areas. So I'm just gonna go around here and I'm gonna paint a bit just like so. Go. And then I'll come up maybe around here, uh, around this section. Might make that a bit dark. And maybe over here on this side. And maybe around here, I've got these little sort of raised, um, raised areas. Uh, and that looks pretty good. I could do a, a bit more, possibly like some light, little light dabs in some of these vertices here. And maybe like really dark just underneath the eye. Okay, so once we've done that, there's a couple of things that have kind of happened behind the scenes. One of them is, if I come over here to this little green tab, which is the object data properties, and I come down to vertex colors, you'll see this new group here called Cull. Now, when you start off with a model, uh, there's nothing under vertex color, but as soon as you go into vertex paint and start painting, it'll create this and it'll label it for you. It always labels it Cull, that's the first one. You can change this name to whatever you want. You know, we could call it Grime, for example. We can also make multiple uh, vertex groups. So if you want to do a lot of different uh, vertex color groups and uh, use them in different ways, you can just click the, the plus symbol to create a new one. Uh, it'll copy over whatever settings you've got from your first one. It'll just duplicate it. But we can see, I can change this so I can set vertex colors. Now it's all black. I can switch now between the two of them and uh, that, that'll uh, show me the difference between the two. So, so how can we use this? Well, let me show you. We're gonna come over into our uh, object mode. I'll switch back to render view and I'll come over here to my shader editor. Now, what I'm gonna go over for, let's see, is we're going to be so we're going to be affecting the roughness of our uh, material. You see this glossy kind of metallic 
uh, shader. And we're gonna make it rough wherever we've got these vertex colors. So to do that, I'm gonna do a couple of things. First, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Musgrave texture. And this is a uh, procedural uh, texture that's gonna create some procedural noise for me. I could just plug this in to my roughness right away and we can see how that's gonna look. So I also add in a color ramp to give myself a little more control right here. And then I'm gonna change the scale and just zoom it right out. You can see what it does because it's this kind of blobby look. Now, if you take the dimension down and the detail up like that, we're gonna get um, this really nice kind of dirty, grungy look. I'll just bring that up a touch more. I might bring my scale down. We don't need it to be quite that big. So there we go. So we got this nice, dirty, grungy muck that's happening on our on our material. Now, another thing that's really helpful uh, when you're doing something like this with roughness is to actually think about what's the base roughness you want for your object. So right now I've got mine set to 0.37. And I could actually just use that in my color ramp. So I could come over here, uh, so let's say to black, and I could say, all right, I want uh, I want to go 0.37 into R, G, and B. So I can copy that and paste it into all three. And that means that wherever there's black in this uh, texture, it's going to use that value, which is the base value that I've set. So basically it means black now becomes this base value. And then white, you know, maybe I want white to be really, really rough, so it's not reflected at all. So I might drag it down a little bit so it's not perfect white, because you don't want perfect white for realism. It doesn't quite work. Now, if I plug this in, it's gonna be a bit more of a subtle effect, but it's gonna be kind of moving from the point that we start at, right, if that makes sense. So I've got my base roughness here, and now I've kept my base roughness because this color matches that roughness number. And now what it's doing is it's creating a difference between what we started with and this new value that we've got, which is uh, higher, closer to one, which means we'll be even less reflective, right? So now, okay, how can we use this with what we've just done with vertex colors? Well, let's make a little bit more room. I'll just drag some of these nodes out. And uh, what we can do is we can combine the two. So I will grab my a new node called the uh, vertex color node. And there it is. You can see this little icon. It's the same as the icon here next to vertex color. I can click that and select grime. Now let's have a look at what this looks like all by itself. So I'll just come over here and I'll create an emission shader and plug that into color and plug that into surface. And yes, I do know about Node Wrangler. I'm just, uh, don't have it activated. So save your fingers the effort of typing that comment if you want, you can still type it. I don't, I don't. Anyways, so you can see what it looks like. Vertex color is the same basically as what things looked like when we were in vertex paint, right? So it's just bringing that color over. Now you can see how if we had like colors in our vertex paint. So if I switched back over to uh, vertex paint and grabbed a color, like pink here and painted some pink. And then we switch back over to render view. You can see that pink shows up here for us. So I'm just gonna undo that. Now, now that we know what it looks like, how can we use it? So let's go back over to object mode and let's bring our uh, vertex color back over here. And what we wanna do is we wanna use it to basically get rid of this grime, right? Now, if you remember uh, the, where we want grime is currently black here on the vertex color, right? We painted it where that's black. We wanna invert that because what we wanna do is use a math op operation to multiply these numbers together. Now, whenever you're doing this with procedural materials, you have to remember that basically when you, you know, when you do multiplication in math, whenever you multiply any value by zero, you get zero. If you multiply any value by one, you get that value again, right? It doesn't change the value. And black and white are just numbers, right? Uh, black is all zeros, white is all ones. So we can think that way when we're looking at this vertex color group that we've just painted. Wherever we've painted black, it's a zero. Wherever we've painted white, it's a one. And we're gonna use math, we're gonna multiply those numbers with the numbers that we're generating here with our Musgrave texture and our color ramp. But of course, our vertex color is mostly white. So if we're multiplying most of it by white, it means that this grunge isn't gonna change. It's gonna take whatever number represents this grunge and it's gonna stay the same. Whereas where we want the grunge, this black area, it's gonna get rid of it because anything multiplied by zero becomes zero. So it's gonna disappear. So the first step we need to do to get this to work is A, either paint our vertex colors correctly from the start, or B, we could use an invert right now to switch it around. So I'm gonna use the invert node I'll plug it in just like that. All right, so now what we wanna do is we need to mix these two together. So let's create a mix RGB. We're gonna drop it right here. We're gonna set it to multiply. 
And then what we can do is we can plug in our inverted vertex color group into this and we can turn the factor all the way up to one. Now you can see we've got grunge wherever we've painted our vertex colors and we don't have any grunge up here where we haven't painted them. So we can use this vertex color now to shape this grunge on this rendered object. So I can actually now stay in, in Eevee in rendered view, right? Remember I said before you couldn't see vertex paints? Well, it doesn't matter now because it's using this vertex paint inherently in my shader. So I can uh, just sort of drop this back to uh, black and now I can come in and I can say, all right, you know, I wanna add a little bit of grunge up here. And bam, there you, go. you can see that the grunge is appearing and I can paint more there or I can come in and take some away. So it's a really powerful tool for quickly adding in a little bit of extra detail into your shaders by creating basically a mat with uh, vertex groups. It's, it's a really cool way to add in grunge and grime and paint in little details. Now, the caveat to this is that it only works where there's vertices, right? So if you've got some really light mesh with not a lot of vertexes, you're not gonna have a lot of places to paint. So it does have limitations. But this is a really good use case for this particular trick. And I hope it really helps you out a lot. Well, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a few cool things. Hope this was a new tip for you that you can start using in your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and leave a comment down below so that we can find out what you think and what you wanna know in future tutorials. So thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.